points to know. Okay, so uh, question six. The diagram shows the curves cos x and sin x between 0 and pi by 2. The region R is bounded by the curves and the x-axis. Find the volume of the solid of revolution formed when R is rotated completely about the x-axis. Giving your answer in terms of pi. Right. Um, what, what should we do? We've got... We've got a couple of choices here. Uh, actually, I think we're going to try and be as smart as we can about this. That sine and cos, they're the same kind of shape, aren't they? And so, based on the fact that the, those curves follow the same sort of basic shape, just moved on a certain amount along the x-axis, this is perfectly symmetrical, isn't it? That if we, if we think of this line drop down the middle, down there, then these two halves of this shape are exactly the same. So rather than get all caught up with doing both parts of this, let's just do one half of it and double our answer. Because that seems like a much more sensible way about going about doing this. So, uh, so we're only going to look at the first half. Now if, that's, if it's symmetrical, this must be pi by 4 in there. And the bit that we're looking at, this is the sine curve. I mean, it may even be helpful to label this as the thing. That, that's the bit that's y plus sine x, isn't it? And that's the y plus cos x bit. Okay? <coughs> we do know that, but let's, let's just be extra careful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that, the first part, and we're going to double it. Now, it didn't ask us to find the area of it. It just asked us to find the volume of the solid formed when R is rotated. So, um, volumes of revolution, remember from... From uh, core 3, it's the integral of pi y squared dx in the range that we're looking for. So, let's work out what we want. So our volume uh, is r, isn't it? So the volume of r is, now I'm going to double this because I'm doing just half of it, so it's twice pi times sine squared x dx in the range 0 to pi by 4. And actually the first part of this question, the big part to start with, is getting to this, isn't it? Actually working out enough of what the question was asking is to get to that being our integral. Now we've just talked about this sine squared. We can't integrate that straight away. So what we're going to do with that is uh, we're going to rearrange it. And we went through this a few moments ago that we've got, just in case we've forgotten. We've got cos 2a is cos squared a, that says cos, minus sine squared a. If you want to replace cos squared with 1 minus sine squared, that's 1 minus 2 sine squared a. If we rearrange that, that sine squared a is, what is it, um, a half of 1 minus cos 2a. So our, our integral that we're after here is now going to become the integral of twice pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of a half 1 minus cos 2x. dx. Now I want to keep things as simple for myself as I possibly can, and I'm multiplying this by 2 pi, but then the thing that I'm, is inside my integral is got a factor of a half. So that's just 2 times a half is 1, isn't it? That's pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of 1 minus 2 cos x. It's always nice to have drilling going on. Um, right, so uh, we're ready to integrate this. Are we happy with having got to this point? Um, don't, don't fall into the trap of just making light of this 1. If we integrate 1, we get x. We have an x in there. If we integrate cos 2x, well, cos doesn't go negative because that's sine and 2x to minus cos, so not cos. 
Um, and the two is going to give us a half there. Oh, sign. So that's where we are. So we're ready to uh, put our limits in. We've still got the pi there. So it would be pi over 4 minus a half sine pi by 2. Take away 0 minus a half of sine 0. And again, we want to make absolutely certain that we're getting this right, so you're going to be really careful with the calculator putting it into the calculator if you want to, um, seeing how it simplifies it. We've got pi times, well actually this is all zero here, isn't it? Sine of zero is zero, we've got zero there. Um, sine of pi by two, sine 90 is one. So we're just left with pi times pi by four minus a half. Um, we might leave it like that. We might take the quarter out and leave it as being that. I don't know. Um, that's, that's probably enough as an answer, isn't it? So we've got the mark scheme. Oh, the mark scheme said pi, a quarter pi squared minus a half of pi. But they would have accepted uh, a factorised version. Okay. Um, certainly. The, the tough thing about that question wasn't particularly the integration, because as long as you were careful about all these extra factors, it was all right. It was, it was getting to that point to start with, wasn't it? Just being able to get through the words of the question to something that we could actually work with. But there we go, seven marks, just about 10% of that one thing. That's my